All right, so we're going to mimic what might be a full project, a very simplified one. And there will be a lot of features in Revit that we don't get to, but I'm going to just kind of take you from initial file startup to the modeling, and then from the modeling of the basic elements. Uh, we'll look at a way of setting up a quick rendering. We'll do a quick sort of drawing uh, with some notes and dimensions, uh, and then we'll put all that stuff onto a sheet. So we'll run through that whole process. Uh, should be 15 minutes or so, and uh, you can kind of just jump in when I get to the stage that you're at. And uh, I'm just going to use my default US Canada projects template. It'll take me to my floor plan view. I'm going to click on my wall tool. I'm going to choose the exterior brick on metal stud. I'm going to set the height to level two. And I'm going to use this rectangle tool and just create a simple set of walls. The dimensions doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter. You can make it whatever size as long as it's not kind of Walmart size, just something in about that realm. So I've got my four walls as I did before. I'm going to set up my detail level here to be fine and shaded for my visual style. It allows me to see a little bit more information here about what my walls look like. I'll check it in my 3D view and I'll also set up my 3D view so it as well uh, shows a fine level of detail and a shaded visual style. I'm going to go back to my level one floor plan view and on that same architecture tab on the build panel right beside the wall you'll see the door tool. So if you activate the door tool just by clicking on it once you'll see that in your properties window you now have the option of placing this M underscore single flush traditional kind of wood frame uh, residential door. I'll just accept that <coughs> and if you hover over any of the four walls you'll see that it gives you this kind of initial prompt letting you know where it's about to place the door. Once you click to place it on the wall, you'll notice that it gives you um, a cutaway and it shows the door in the open position. Now you may have also noticed when you were doing that, that if you weren't hovering over the wall, if for example, you were kind of floating around the interior or the outside of the house or the set of walls, you'll see that no entry symbol. Well, Revit's smart enough to know that you can't just leave a door just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you have to have a host. So the wall is the host for the door, and it won't let you just leave it out. Um, if only construction sites were like that, nobody would just drop off a door and hope that you knew what to do with it. So uh, just another example of how Revit knows what these objects are, and it knows how to combine them with other objects the right way. So there's our door. We're going to do the same thing with the window tool next to the door. So just to the right of door, just click on window. We don't get a lot of really great options with our window type. Initially, you'll just see these tiny little 400 by 600 millimeter windows. And you can just drop a few of those in there. Same general idea. It's looking for a wall for a host. And you can just drop a whole bunch of those in there. Place another couple doors as well if you like. Eventually, we'll look at how we can load different types of windows. Uh, we can go on the internet and look for manufacturer-specific windows as well. But for the sake of just doing a quick demo, we'll just use what becomes uh, readily available on the type selector. Have a look at that in 3D. You can actually place these objects in your three-dimensional view as well, something that we'll get to. But uh, there's just a simple display here just letting us know where our uh, doors and windows are. I'm going to go to my level one floor plan view. Sorry, level two. We've been there already. We'll go up to our level two floor plan view and we're going to put a quick roof on this. Now you'll notice when you go to the level two floor plan view that the walls that you created in the previous view are here. They're represented but only as kind of gray faint outlines. Um, it's just kind of letting you know where those walls are, but they don't officially show up in this view. And we'll kind of elaborate on that later. But uh, this is a good way to set up our roof. So what we're going to do is once again on the architecture tab on the build panel, we're going to click on the roof tool. Remember, it's just uh, the default state of that tool that we want. If I don't mention anything about the, the drop down or the pull down, just uh, select it at the top in its default state. So this will be roof by footprint. Activate the tool 
And this is something to uh, pay attention to. This is something that you'll see repeated in multiple, um, with multiple methods in Revit. It looks, it's looking for a little bit more information. It wants a sketch indicating where the uh, footprint or the outline of that roof is going to be. And so it's placed you in sketch mode. And you'll notice you're in sketch mode because a lot of the tools get grayed out. And you'll see this red X and this green check. And uh, this tab wasn't there before. So once we activated the roof by footprint tool, we got a special tab on the right. And it's the modify create roof, put, roof footprint tab. And we can see here that the default state of this is that it wants us to create boundary lines. Now there's a quick and easy way that we can do this. The default draw panel tool is pick walls. So with that activated, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to specify an overhang so that we get a bit of a soffit with this roof. So in this window on the options bar that says overhang, I'm going to highlight, type in 600, which is roughly two feet. And then I'm going to hover over any one of the four walls. So notice where I've got my cursor. When I hover there, it gives me this blue dotted line 600 millimeters away. So if I click at this point, it's going to create a pink sketch line for the outline of the roof in that spot. But before I do that, if I hit the tab key, sometimes it takes a, a few times for this to work. If I hit the tab key, there we go. Just needed to be uh, refreshed a bit, I guess. If you hit the tab key, it will actually jump to an assumption from an assumption of one wall to an assumption that you want uh, a matching roof outline for each of the four walls. If that didn't work out, you can always just click on this tool beside, which is just simply pick lines, specify your offset of 600, and then click on the outside line of each of the four walls. Probably a good idea to avoid hovering over one of the windows or doors, because it might set an outside line based on those objects. But if you just hover over the wall, wait for that little blue dotted line and then click, Eventually, what you'll end up with is a set of these pink sketch lines 600 millimeters away from the outside face of each of your four walls. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a hipped or pyramidal roof. Each one of these lines is going to have a 30 degree slope. Certainly customizable. We'll get into that later. But if we just click on the green check now and then go to a 3D view, we'll see that we've got a nice quick and easy little hipped roof here. And I'm hoping this is one of those moments when you're like, I'm never going back to SketchUp. Right? That's a little harder to do in a program like SketchUp. Uh, and that was a really simple roof. I could have done a more elaborate uh, building footprint. I could have had, you know, little box outs and sections that were kind of poking out in different directions and it would have resolved that with all the appropriate slopes and more importantly, would have figured out all the valleys and the ridges, which you know from you know, doing the same thing in SketchUp can be a pretty tedious exercise and take quite a while. Um, and I didn't even really mention that about the doors and windows. Doing something simple like a door or a window in a traditional 3D program like SketchUp, uh, you have to cut the volume out of the wall and you have to build the battens and the trim and the frame and the paint and everything else. Revit, assuming that you're just basically creating a traditional type of building, has a lot of those tools just kind of ready-made, preset and good to go. So right away, we're quite a ways ahead of where we would be if we were just using a traditional 3D program. Agreed? Good. Okay. Sometimes there's oohs and ahs when I do that, but it's okay. You don't have to perform. Uh, we will now go to our floor plan site view. And we'll move away from the building into some site elements and some entourage elements. Really, really basic. But in that site view... We can now click on the Massing and Site tab. And I'm going to activate the Topo Surface tool. <coughs> now, don't expect any nice orthogonal alignment lines here. It's not going to give you 90 degree alignments or a lot of the stuff that you saw with the walls. You're going to have to kind of suspend your OCD a little bit and just place those points randomly. Don't worry. For the sake of the demo, that's fine. But if you activate Topo Surface and just Click four times at points outside of the corners of your little house. Don't worry about the fact that those lines aren't straight or properly resolved. 
just make those four points and then just click on the green check. So notice it took us back into that sketch mode, something that you'll see repeated again and again in Revit, where it's just expecting a little bit more information from you, so it takes you into the kind of special environment to create the sketch. Okay, in that site plan view still with our building and our site created, we're now going to go to the view tab. And on the view tab, I'm going to click on the create panel under the 3D view tool. And I'm going to locate the camera tool. So click on camera. It's a simple two-step process. One click places the camera, the second click points the camera. So activate camera, one click to place it, the second click to point it, and it'll take you right to a 3D view of your building. And we're just going to, over here in the properties window, uncheck this box. I'm not sure why this is the default state of the camera uh, tool, but uh, let's just unclip far clip active. And that'll make it so that you can actually see the edge of your site or a horizon line. It's a little bit bleak right now. We'll do some landscaping. We'll just add some basic entourage. So I'm going to go back to the site floor plan view. On that same massing and site tab where we found topple surface, right below that tab, I'm going to select site component. And in the type selector, I'll see that I have some different options here for tree types or species. <coughs> and I'll just go with the default and just a simple click with each little instance to place some trees. And then if I want to go back to my camera view, notice that after I created it, I've got it visible over here in my browser under the 3D view section. That section of the browser isn't visible until you've at least activated the default 3D view. And then after that, all the camera views that you create uh, will be stored there so that you can come back to them fairly easily. All right, so there is my perspective view of the building with the trees. Once I've done that, I can click on the little teapot down here at the bottom. So this is the view control bar. And right beside the button where we activated the shadows, there's a little teapot with a light bulb on it. And there's a whole bunch of settings there that we'll eventually cover in more detail. But for now, if you just activate that render window, and then at the top, I'm just going to click the render button. And as you would expect, it's going to take this beyond the simple sort of visual style of hidden line or shaded. It's going to apply some of the sunlight and some shadows. It's going to make the trees look a little bit more convincing. Certainly not terribly photorealistic. It's not a finished product, but just for the sake of a quick demo, there's your basic rendering. Uh, I can save it to the project by clicking here on Save to Project. And I'll just accept the default name. And now what I have is a saved rendering view in my browser. So just another example of how as you get further and further into a project, you'll see that this browser gets to be quite crowded. And that's one of the reasons why, again, I moved it away from the properties window and just kind of have it sit on its own over, uh, on its own over here on the right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so with those few elements uh, in my project browser, I'm going to quickly generate a sheet. And again, I do that by going to the View tab. And I will then over here on the Sheet Composition panel, click on the Sheet tool. And the new sheet window will show me a list of all the loaded title blocks that I have. By default, I can see that I've got an A0. I'll just go with that, although I could load more. I'll just uh, select OK. There's the sheet. And again, this is kind of like paper space in AutoCAD. And all I have to do now is just drag views to the sheet. So I'll start with my rendering view here. So in the browser, now there's a new section for renderings. If I double click on the uh, 3D view one and just drag it, there's a little view of my rendering. And I can do the same thing with some of these other views, like for example, the self elevation view. 
And an A0 is a pretty large sheet, so you can see that these are kind of getting lost in all that space there. Last thing I'm going to do before I drag on one of my floor plan views is just show you some of the 2D work that uh, we'll be doing in Revit. So I'm going to go back to my level one floor plan view. And as I mentioned before, uh, typically when we want to do drafted uh, elements, drafted drawing, uh, drafted views, we want to switch this detail level back to coarse. And I'm also going to go back to the hidden line style. And I'm just going to really quickly throw on a couple of uh, dimensions here. So I will go to the annotate tab. And on the annotate tab on the dimension panel, I'm going to just select aligned dimension and just hover over the center of this wall, click, and then hover over the center of the wall on the other side, click, and it just gives me a quick dimension there. So I've got 9,000 millimeters from the center of one wall to the center of the other wall. And then I'm going to go back here to my sheet view, which is now available in the project browser. I will double click on A101, which is the sheet name that it gives to my new sheet. And just simply drag level one onto that sheet. And there we go. Okay. And if you zoom in there, you'll see the dimension. So as I said, that just kind of mimics most of the major steps. Uh, of a project, the ones that we'll be focusing on. There are all kinds of other things that Revit can do. It can do simulations and it can do estimates and schedules, uh, detailing. There's a lot of things that we didn't touch on there, but that just kind of gives you a simplified sort of view of the process of the project uh, that we'll be doing.